Ayo, teks hey, uh, jaya uh, to read. Read a book. I'm si Jai Jai. Sex, sing sexy si, si Jai Jai. sisters are married and leading Mother happy May, lives. Baby. Bah, bah, bah. My younger sister Amy like, is an artist bah. and married to Theodore Lawrence. We call him Laurie because we've known him for years. When we were growing up, he lived next door to us, and his tutor, John Brooks, married my older sister. Meg and John have ten-year-old twins. Demi is a Plumfield student, and Daisy is staying with us because Meg recently had another baby. But that's enough about the past. It's time to meet the little men of Plumfield, and Daisy too. One rainy spring Saturday, a ragged 12-year-old boy arrived at the door of a large, comfortable house. He gave a timid rap with the brass knocker. Although he could hear children playing inside, no one came to the door. He knocked again, but when no one answered, he hesitantly pushed open the door. And what a sight greeted him. Two boys about his age were playing tag, while two younger boys chased a yellow puppy and the red one. Another boy sat quietly reading on the stairs. Masa sa mga subukan ni Mama o? Subukan, subukan ni Mama. Are you a new boy? I don't know yet, he said shyly. My name is Nat Blake, and I have a letter from Mrs. Bauer from Mr. Theodore Lawrence. He said she'd take care of me. It's okay. Wait here, and I'll take Uncle Lori's letter to Aunt Jo. Hi, Daisy. 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 Daisy pointed to the boy reading on the stairs, oblivious to what was happening around him. Suddenly, one of the tag players slid down the banister. Unable to stop, the boy landed with a crash that would have knocked anyone else unconscious. Nat forgot his shyness and ran over, expecting to find the boy half dead. However, the boy simply blinked rapidly and looked up at Nat. Have you come to join us? I'm Tommy Bangs. Tommy jumped up as if he'd just remembered his manners. Come play tag with Jack Ford and me. I should probably wait to see whether I'm staying, Nat mumbled, looking around. He saw a large schoolroom and a cozy parlor. A dining room had a table set for supper. As the smell of gingerbread filled the air, Nat's desire to stay grew. Daisy returned with the news that Nat was to stay. She led him to Joe's study. I'm delighted to see you. Joe smoothed the hair from Nat's forehead. I hope you'll be happy here. Oh my, but your feet are wet. Joe bustled around and found Nat some slippers. She smiled at him. These are too big, but that'll keep you from running away. I don't want to run away, ma'am. <laughs> Nat dissolved in a fit of coughing. How long have you been sick? Joe asked, looking concerned. 
caught a cold this winter and never recovered, Nat said when he could speak again. Sit by the fire and we'll get some medicine into you. Nat had just swallowed a spoonful no, no, of medicine no. when the bell rang for supper. Joe led him into the dining room, where he found a cheerful man sitting with six children. Nat, this is my husband, Professor Bauer, Joe said. And I think you've already met our two sons, Rob and Teddy. This is Jack, Tommy, Demi, and Daisy. <coughs> <clears throat> Nat nodded shyly and took the empty seat next to Tommy. Where did you used to go to school? Tommy asked. I didn't, Nat said, and Tommy's eyes widened in surprise. I worked on the city streets, playing the fiddle That's with my up. father and a man named Nicolo. That's sounds like fun, Tommy said. And it was his house, the Maganda. Nat paused to take a bite of After my father died and I got sick, Niccolo took away my fiddle. I bet Mr. Bauer will let you play his old fiddle, Tommy said, making Nat's face brighten with pleasure. 